I came apart, uh, along this part today and I decided to uh, kind of share with you some of the, uh, the the issues and things that I had with this. And it's got some pretty pretty simple geometry to start off with. Uh, for the most part a little cylinder and then a little cut all the way through the center. Uh, a little slot cut and then a pattern so we've got two slot cuts through there. Okay, so fairly simple geometry, but the uh, the next part of the geometry is actually a uh, fourth axis uh, milling operation that's going to be cut around through the center of this. So I'm going to start off with the kind of three different concepts on how to do this and kind of the pros and cons of each. So the first one, I'm going to start with uh, some 3D sketching. So a little bit of advanced 3D sketching too. I'm going to go ahead and pre-select on that, that surface and I'm going to say spline on surface and I'm just going to pick two points and go into select mode and I didn't put them exactly on those little end locations so that way when you drag it you can kind of see that we are directly on that cylindrical face and the spline is you know just kind of contouring through those two points that I picked so now that I have it on there I'm going to pre-select both those points hold down control and we'll say merge and then I want this to be right on the edge there and we're going to make that coincident Okay, the last thing I need to do uh, for the location of this is uh, know that this point needs to be uh, 1.75 inches off of that. That's where I want that end location to be. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to preserve this little end point on that, on that thing. Now we're going to add some more to this 3D sketch. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, first I'm going to start with just the point command. I'm going to pre-select a plane and just put a point on the plane. So if I pick on there, he already has the on plane uh, relationship. So then I'm going to select on my origin and that point and we'll put him along the X. So that should stick him exactly where he's at. Alright, then we're going to do just a line command from one point to another. And that's it. And then uh, I want to kind of do the same thing coming here to the center, but the problem is I don't have a little face or a plane or anything to kind of work off. Now I could create a uh, a plane, but I'm in a 3D sketch and there's some some kind of neat little tools that we can use just to kind of to fudge it or get it where we need to. So first thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and draw a straight line uh, down. You can see I'm getting the little uh, Y axis and then I'm going to go over to the right a little bit and just plop it out there and then I'll go back up to the origin. Now what that does is it kind of sets to where this has to stay along Y Okay, this guy, I actually wanted him along Z, so that's good. And then what we can do is we can position this and the origin, and again make it along X. And that pretty much dic dictates from uh, that point looking straight on the, uh, the center axis there. And that's kind of the thing. When you're working with the uh, fourth axis machines, uh, all of the points are usually going straight towards the, uh, the center axis. And of course my last little line can go from here to there. And this should actually line up with the axis on the cylinder. Okay. And that's pretty much it. That's the geometry that I'm going to need to uh, uh, pretty much do a loft in here. So I'll finish out of the 3D sketch. I'll go to surfaces and we'll go to a lofted surface. And my profiles, uh, everything's done in a 3D sketch, so I have to right click in here and do the selection manager. And then I'll pre-select on that. I'm making sure to pick near the uh, center axis there. And then I need another selection manager. I'm going to pick again near the center axis but on that line. Say OK. So there's my little lofted profile, but then we're going to use some guide curves. So again, right click selection manager. Uh, we'll use the outside contour surface there, or that outside guide curve, and do the same thing, select manager. And this will kind of straighten up that last, uh, that last little leg so that the surface is always looking straight at the, uh, the center axis of that cylinder. All right, and we'll just say OK. That gives us a nice little surface in there. You kind of see them in there. And then we just need to trim them off of there. So we'll go to insert, cut, cut with surface. I need to flip it so it's going out the other side. That's the, the direction we're going to remove the solid off of there. And there's my little cut. Now, usually we'll hide our surface bodies. So we'll hide that guy. And then we'll just do a uh, circular pattern. So features to pattern is just going to be that surf cut. Uh, about the outside cylindrical face. Uh, equally spaced, four of them, 360 degrees, and just hit OK. 
So now from, again, uh, the main thing is from this point to this point here, we've got three quarters or one and three quarters of an inch. And I got a nice little spiral cut that's coming down in through there. Now, the only bad thing about this is I didn't have a lot of control as far as where this curve, uh, how it was residing and stuff on there. So, you know, it, it's not, it may not be a true helix. You know, we actually have some control that we could do on it. Uh, we can go back into that, edit the sketch. We can actually add a spline point, place a little spline point on there. Uh, take a look at our sketch or triad. And then we can actually move it back and forth and give it a little bit more control or curve. You know, on how we actually want to come about uh, creating that little cut in there. Okay. I'll go ahead and hide the uh, sketch or triad and finish out of the sketch. So that's kind of good, but, you know, kind of some bad stuff as well. It, we don't have a lot of control over that being a, a pure helix. So let's take a look at a, a second way to do this. So I'm going to do a, a add a configuration. We'll call this uh, take two. And we'll go ahead and uh, suppress all this good stuff. So we're back to square one. Now this one is, uh, I'm going to take this into effect as, say for instance, uh, on this edge, I want to take this entire edge and make it consistent. Okay. So I'm just going to sketch on there, do a new sketch. I'm just going to steal that bottom edge. So I'll pick on that and say convert entities. So you see all I have is just that straight line there. And then I'm pretty much, pretty much done. The next thing I want to do is sketch on this little side inside face here. So we'll do a new sketch. And I'm just going to draw a line from here, just out some amount. And then we'll do a dimension. Make it 1.75. So that way I know that this is going to go out uh, one and three quarters of an inch. Okay. So a little bit different tool instead of the uh, the surface loft I'm going to do a surface sweep. I'm going to use this as my profile. Uh, this is my path. Right now it's just going to create a flat surface. But we have an option in here that we can twist along the path. So I want to twist it up 90 degrees. So you can kind of see as it's starting to come out and around it's going to twist up 90 degrees. Now this should be pretty dang close to a helix. Pretty right on. Okay. So I can go ahead and say OK. We can do our little surf cut, insert cut with surface. It's going in the proper direction, so we'll say OK. We'll go ahead and hide our surface body. And so now you can kind of see I've got a nice little edge. Now this can be created uh, on the fourth axis, but it's going to be a little bit tricky because you have to offset your tool. Uh, your tool is not going to be directly at the center, and as you're starting to rotate around, you're going to have to also have it kind of offset a little bit whatever that tool diameter is. Okay. But then when it comes out, you know, you have the actual edge coming coming right on that. So that that's actually a pretty nice little little way to do it. You get a little bit more material there. All right. And of course, the last thing is you got to finish it off and do a little circular pattern. Pick the feature. Pick the cylindrical face. There's four. And we'll say okay. So, some pretty nice looking stuff. All right. And the last one is let's just make sure that we do have a pure helical cut in here. So it's going to take a little bit more time. Let's go ahead and add another configuration. Take three. Uh, make sure it's active. It is. Let's go ahead and suppress these guys. So we're back to square one. So this one's going to be a little trickier. We're going to do a new sketch. Uh, for the most part, all helixes start out with a circle. So I'm just going to draw a circle out here pin it to that little outside little edge. And then I'm going to need some uh, some construction geometry in here. So I'm going to go ahead and draw up some lines. And I need one more line. So I know what to go off of. Okay. Then we'll put some dimensions in here. And I want them to be driven. That's fine. And we'll put one more dimension out here. And I'll show you what I'm going to use these guys for in just a bit. Uh, and for the most part, they, they're going to help me with the, the helix itself. So I'll finish out of the sketch. I'm going to pre-select the sketch before I go into uh, Insert Curve and do Helix Spiral. So that way um, I can tell it exactly where to go. And we're going to do uh, Pitch. 
our uh, height and revolution. And the height, I know, it needs to be 1.75. I need to flip it so it goes the other way, so I'm going to reverse the direction. And the actual spin is in the right direction. Uh, and I know it's going to be close to, uh, I'm going to say some weird number, 0.2445. And the start angle needs to go up just a little bit. I think it was around 10. So let's add 10 to that. Nope, the other way. There we go. So it's close. It's not right on. And you can kind of see right over here, it's not right on either. But that's that's okay. I'm going to fix that in just a bit. Can't really do it in the dialog boxes here. So I'll go ahead and say okay. But we'll go ahead and turn on our featured dimensions here. And then we'll start to kind of link them together with the dimensions that are already here in our sketch. So uh, here we go. Let's see how this, this works. So I've got, uh, here's a 170. This was the uh, that dimension. So I'm going to say uh, 180 minus, and oh, make sure you put equals in front of here. 180 minus, so it keeps it as an equation. And then I'll select on that dimension. So that should put that point dead on there, OK? And then I need to change where the uh, the end location of this guy is. So somewhere in here, there's some dimension that's a a weird one. Here he is, right here. So let's double click on him. And he is going to be he's how many revolutions? So of course, a full circle is 360 degrees. So all I have to do is say equals this angle divided by 360. And we'll say OK to that. And we'll rebuild. And that should put my helix dead on from here uh, to there. So that looks pretty good. We'll go ahead and uh, hide our annotations. And now that we've got our helix uh, exactly where uh, we want it, uh, we now need to just kind of finish off how we're going to do it. So we also, again, need to decide whether we're actually going from the center of the helix uh, to the center of the part, or the, the end point of the helix to the center of the part. Uh, or if we're actually going to leave these edges intact. So in this one, I'm going to use the loft and we'll leave these uh, edges intact. So I'm going to do a new sketch. Uh, again, just steal that entity there. Uh, finish out of the sketch. We'll do another new sketch here. And we'll go along the line. I'll go straight up. And then I need to attach the end point of this to that spline. So we'll hold down, oops, let me pick it again. Make sure you hold down control. Pick on the entire spline, and we're going to do a pierce constraint. And I'm going to change this guy over to uh, construction. So pretty much this is the only line right here that I need. Um, I take it back. For doing a loft, I'm going to need that other line. I'm going to do this in separate sketches, though. So do a new sketch, select on that line, convert entities. And there we go. The only tricky thing is I got to be careful of you know which ones I select and how I select them. So we'll go back to surfaces. We're going to do a lofted surface. Uh, kind of same thing. Profile is going to be this guy and this guy. See how it's kind of getting the uh, the wrong one. So I'm going to pick him out of the browser. So that looks good. And then my guide curves are going to be the helix and this bottom line there. And if we turn off our solid body, you can kind of see our little surface inside there. And again, the nice thing about the helix is, you know, all of our points are going to be uh, twisting down towards uh, the center of that. Okay, so we'll turn this guy back on. Now, occasionally you may have some issues. Uh, if we try and do a surf cut, let me pre-select my surface here. And we'll do a cut with surface. And we'll flip it to the other side and we'll say OK. And notice it gives me an operation it can't do that. So what happens is sometimes on the helix, on the outside of the curve, um, it doesn't doesn't extend far enough to, uh, to trim that surface or to trim the solid. Uh, so you can try a couple different things. So I'll show you, show you some things that I, I usually try. We'll go ahead and hide our body. We're going to do a uh, extend surface. And I usually try and extend it out in certain directions. And I usually try and just do one at a time because you don't want to extend any more than you have to. So I extend those and then you try this again, see if it works. And I'm pretty sure for this one it's not, but I just want you to kind of see the workflow that we're going through to, to get, get the right geometry. So 
So I'll flip that. And again, same same issue. So more than likely, it, it is on the outside of that, that helix, that contour. Uh, let me go ahead and turn off that. And we're going to go back to edit the feature. Uh, I forgot to turn off my solid, so I can do it while I'm inside the uh, the feature. It's no problem. And I'm just going to pre-select this outside edge where the helix is. So that way it's extending along that direction as well. So that for sure should should get it. Shouldn't have any problem there. So we'll turn our uh, solid back on. You can kind of see the surface is extending out past that. So now we can select that and do a cut. Flip it to the other side and we'll say OK. And now we got a really nice helical cut through there. Uh, we can turn the surface off. And of course we can do our feature array. Circular pattern about the center of that circular face and hit OK. So some really nice ways to get a, a couple different you know pieces of geometry. Um, you can kind of see how it works. Was the first one was using the uh, the 3D sketch, a little bit more complex 3D sketch. Uh, take two was pretty much the easiest, the most simplest, uh, just because we only had to have pretty much create uh, two sketches, just a single line sketch, and then the uh, line for the path. Um, but you know, not as much control on that. And then of course the last one which was done with the actual helix itself. So we get a nice smoother, a little bit smoother contour, uh, a little bit more control in the dialog boxes, and we added some of the uh, the equations and the, dif the dimensions in there. So hopefully you enjoyed that, and uh, thanks for watching.